Sad day in our area today with the funeral for fallen Lower Borough Police Officer Derek Kateki taking place less than two hours from right now. Last night, Officer Kateki's widow and his two children attended a candlelight vigil in his honor. Hundreds of people who didn't even know him came out to show their love and respect for his family. Today, a funeral mass will take place at Mount St. Peter Catholic Church in New Kensington at 11 o'clock. Police officers from departments all around the country will be attending. They'll follow a horse-drawn hearse in a funeral procession from the funeral home in Lower Burl to the church in New Kensington. And we'll have more on Officer Kateki's funeral and procession a little later this hour. Now, Officer Kateki's death came after another loss, the death of Steve Jobs. His death also profoundly affected those who didn't even know him. Jobs was the mastermind behind the iPhone and the iPad. He died October 5th after a long struggle with pancreatic cancer. Jobs is credited with changing the way the world communicates and inspiring others to dare to dream big. He was remembered at a private memorial service in California on Sunday. His message draws parallels with Randy Pausch of Carnegie Mellon University, who also taught us to follow our dreams and live life to the fullest. His famous last lecture to his students is now a bestseller worldwide. He also died after a struggle with pancreatic cancer. These special men gave us important messages to live by. It's not a depressing message, but one of great hope. Dr. Michelle Reese is the counselor who worked with Randy Pausch and his wife Jay during his illness, and she's also the author of a book to help others cope called Lessons in Loss and Living, Hope and Guidance for Confronting Serious Illness and Grief. Good morning, thanks for joining us. Good morning. And the timing, I mean, there's so many parallels between Officer Kateki and Randy Pausch, both yes. inspiring so many people. Is there a way to use that positive inspiration to help get through grief? I think that the fact that all of these men and so many others that mm -hmm. we're not naming, right. um, Randy Pausch, Steve Jobs, Officer Kateki, have touched so many of us. And I think that the message in all of that is life is precious, time is precious. Um, and we should remember that, not just when we lose these people that touch us, but all of the time. So how do we take that on a day-to-day -day, um, level, whether we're in grief or, or you know, just know these yeah. people? How do we make that happen? I, it's interesting to me because both Randy Pausch and Steve Jobs gave some messages. Mm -hmm. um, Randy did in his lecture and Steve Jobs did in, a, I think, a commencement that he gave at Stanford, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And they both talked about the fact for them being seriously ill really awakened them mm -hmm. um, to the preciousness of life and impacted on how they chose to live each day in a very powerful way. And so many of the people that I work with who are seriously ill say the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if I was living life in black and white, and now mm -hmm. I'm living it in technicolor wow. because I don't take anything for granted. Every moment is special. Now, the rest of us know we don't have forever. Right. I mean, it's not like it's a secret. Um, but we tend to go through our days pretty busy with the maybe not so important kinds of details, mm -hmm. a little bit like on automatic pilot. And I think if we could use the messages of these people, the tragedy of a sudden loss, like, like the one that we're mourning in this city now, to remind us that, that we don't have forever. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, there is reason to truly embrace each day and take a little time to think about what's really important to me that normally gets down to who's really important to right. me um, and make sure I spend a little time dedicating um, some of my life to those things that yeah. are most important. Relook at the priorities and then actually Absolutely. make that happen in your life, those Absolutely. priorities. When someone dies um, after a, a drawn out illness, like mm -hmm. uh, Randy Pausch and Steve Jobs, which, I mean, it, drawn out is still in a short term because they yes. had pancreatic cancer, it wasn't right. that long. But compared to Officer Kateki, are there differences in terms of the people left behind grieving when it is all of a sudden one day they're just gone? There are lots of different ways to lose someone we love or care about. None of them are easy. Uh, grief is not pain-free. It's an incredibly hard thing to do. But a sudden, unexpected loss like Officer Kateki's does represent different challenges because there wasn't any warning or time to prepare, mm -hmm. per se. Um, and for most people that grieve, there's an initial period of, of disbelief, of shock, mm -hmm. like, I can't believe this. It doesn't seem real. Right. 
And we know that for people that are experiencing a sudden unexpected loss, that period can be longer and more intense. Yeah. Because truly life changed in the moment it takes to get a knock on the door or a phone call. Right, right. They don't have that time to acclimate and, and start thinking about a future. So how do these people who are left behind, who are still so young, I mean, right. Randy was 47, Steve Jobs 56, um, uh, Officer Kateki, I believe, was 40. Right. Uh, those families are still young. There's children. How do mm -hmm. they start moving forward? It takes time. Um, grief takes time. It's not a race trying to get to a finish line. Mm -hmm. But I think that for all of us when we're grieving, um, the, the job is ultimately to accept the reality of this I can't believe it mm -hmm. loss, mm -hmm. to survive the pain and the suffering that comes with grieving. Um, that's someone that you thought you had a lifetime mm -hmm. with. Um, and then to start amidst that, to find ways to still treasure those who are in your life the things you still have as opposed to just what you've lost. Mm. And very gradually, slowly, slowly, more slowly than we'd like, um, people start to reorient themselves and rebalance themselves um, and treasure what they still have and maybe be a little bit hopeful about what's ahead. Mm -hmm. It's different than the life you wanted and expected and planned for, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still yours. Now, Randy Pausch sought out you to help yes. their family through that. How, what kind of support should people look to get? Can they do it by themselves, or how does having someone to help them make a difference? The answer is different for everyone. Uh -huh. um, some of it depends on what your support system is and how much support there is for you. Some people are making this journey pretty alone, others mm -hmm. are not. Um, I think that for Randy and Jay Pausch, they sought me out initially because they were so concerned about their children. Their mm -hmm. children were very, very young, and they just didn't have any sense of how to even begin to prepare them for that right. loss. Right. So that was their initial impetus to, to go in and, and look into therapy, mm -hmm. um, to look for some additional help. Um, most of us start by getting support from our friends and our family and then move from there. Mm -hmm. But certainly someone who has a particular circumstance like children that <clears throat> they want some support for or someone who's just finding the struggling absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. Someone who might have some underlying other issues like a depression or whatever right. that pre-existed another a loss. Mm -hmm. um, those are people that might want to consider a grief counselor. Right. Um, there are also support groups, uh, lots of information through books and um, all kinds of websites mm -hmm. about grief. It's unfortunately a pretty normal life situation, yeah. just a really hard well, one. Well, it happens to everyone at some point, Absolutely. hopefully not as young as these folks, but everybody Absolutely. will lose a parent or someone That's that right. they love. Yeah, the only way to, to avoid grieving is never to love or care about anyone. And we're lucky to love, so that's, that's right. a good part of life, like you said. Well, that's thank right. you so much, Dr. Reese, for helping with us. You're that, very welcome. Us with that this morning. Again, Dr. Reese of UPMC St. Margaret and the author of Lessons in Loss and Living for her insight today.